Hello. This is a tutorial on how to use the moving boundary feature of ANSYS Fluent. Along the way I'll be discussing and demonstrating the use of MATLAB to ease some of the tasks associated with imposing a moving boundary condition on a more complicated boundary than a simple plain wall. To introduce the problem, this is our moving boundary which contracts towards the center and then expands again and completely drives the flow. As this wall contracts towards the center, it pushes the fluid past these baffles which are kept at a constant temperature and out the outlet which is over here. At the end of the contraction, the outlet is closed and the inlets are opened. This is a cold inlet and this is a hot inlet. The expansion phase of this moving wall then pulls in fluid from the outside at different temperatures and the cycle repeats. I'll play a video of the solution to demonstrate. Once we understand the problem setup, we create our mesh. What we want to do is have on this moving boundary 50 equal space nodes. To accomplish this, we set an edge sizing with 49 divisions. We can check that this creates 50 equal space nodes by creating a name selection here and using our moving wall to convert to mesh nodes and we see that the nodes are located here equal spaced. You can also verify by looking at the mesh. Once we open the mesh in Fluent we want to be able to access the coordinates of these nodes. To do so we first initialize the solution and when it's initialized we go to export solution data. Make sure this is in ASCII and we're looking at the nodes. On our moving wall we want the X and the Y velocity and then we write this to a file. Once the nodal coordinates have been exported from Fluent we can import them into a MATLAB vector we do this by using the fopen function, which simply opens the file to be read, and then the fgetl, which is short for fgetline, from the file inside of a text scan. This pulls the node number, the x coordinate, and the y coordinate, and puts them into vectors. When that's done, we save it into a MATLAB mat file for later use such as in this script. This script loads the saved map file which has the vector of coordinates for X and Y for the nodes in the initial configuration. Then what we want to do with this is create the trajectories or the paths that will be taken by each node for each time step during the expansion and contraction phases. Now I'm using a pretty simple geometric scaling here so I create this scaling and then I simply scale the X and Y vector for each time step. This can be demonstrated by watching a plot of them develop. So we see here this is the starting configuration and each node travels along this trajectory during the contraction phase and when it reaches the end then it travels back along that path in the expansion phase. We'll zoom in on the trajectory of one of these nodes to see what it looks like. This is the starting location. This is the ending location of the contraction phase. And then we take the path back during the expansion. Notice that we don't duplicate here because then the solution would stop for that time step. And we don't duplicate the endpoint here because we're going to use the mod function inside the Fluent UDF to make this cyclical and loop. 
once this has been done, we no longer have a vector of nodal positions. We have matrices. So this has 40 positions for each of the 50 nodes. Two matrices, one in X and one in Y. What we want to do is then write these to a UDF. Now you can do this by hand, or you can use MATLAB to automatically write the UDF. So this just has a bunch of F print F calls that set up the header and the initializations for the UDF. And we'll demonstrate how this works by writing the UDF. So we're going to write my UDF high res dot C and we're going to send it X and Y. So we see that appear over here. Now when we examine this, we can see what this did is it created a bunch of different vectors for X and for Y that are each 40 positions or 40 units long, 40 elements. It created 50 of these for both X and Y. So this has the position of the node at the start, this has for the next time step, and this has for the third st time step for X, and same similarly for Y. Once those are established, then we have in our for loop, we have 50 if statements to find which trajectory the node that ANTS has passed in is on, and then we advance it to the next position along that trajectory. We do this for X and we do this for Y. This gets us the paths needed in the ANSYS UDF. You can see why we don't want to do this by hand. It's easier to have MATLAB do it for us. Once we have the UDF written, we can compile it through the compiler here. We simply select it, build it, and then once it's done building, we load it. This will place it as available for the dynamic mesh. What we do here is we create a user controlled, and you can see that it's here. Now, in order to control the opening and shutting of the inlets, we've used a bunch of events here that are timed in terms of the time steps. The event file looks like this. So this shows that this is event 0, event 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And it shows which time step the event is executed and then the TUI command, which is in effect at that time step. So this one changes the outlet to a pressure outlet after 10 time steps. The time steps are 0 .001 for this simulation. We wanted to do this to first compress the fluid and then have it exhaust out under pressure. At the same time, we set the external pressure and the external temperature. And then at a later time step, we turn the outlet to a wall, the inlets to inlets from walls, which is where they started, and we set their pressure and their temperatures. And then after so many time steps, we turn those back into walls, and the cycle repeats. And we have these for each of the different steps within the cycle. With this in place, we're ready for our simulation. And that is the end of the tutorial.